Hello and welcome to Vancouver Carpenter. Today I'm going to teach you how to install a paper-faced corner bead. This is a paper-faced corner bead and you will need a sharp pair of snips. Now don't let these deceive you, they can still cut paper. These are a great set of snips. You will need a pan or a hawk and a knife. I like a four inch knife for installing corner bead because I can put more pressure on than I could with a six inch therefore getting the corner bead on snugger. And you'll see what I mean in a minute. So I like my mud pretty runny for installing corner beads so I get more adjustment time and it doesn't get all marshmallowy under the bead. So the first thing you need to do is cut your corner bead to length. Let's look at what we're doing real quick. We've got a corner bead that butts up to that one and then goes down to the floor. Also, I want to note what kind of corner beads I like to use. These ones, you have to actually go to a drywall supply place to get. The metal flange inside is very wide. And why this is good is it will cover gaps. You can't see because it's far away, but there's a big gap here. And the wide flange of this bead is going to cover it so I don't have to pre-fill that. So the corner beads you get at Lowe's, Home Depot, Rona do not have that wide flange and they're not as good. But I realize you're going to use what you have at your disposal. First you have to cut the corner bead, so I just hold it, wherever it needs to go, I just hold it there, and because this one's going down to the floor, I'm going to cut it about a half inch short from where this one is. And you want to give it a little extra space. If your house compresses over time at all, and you've got your corner bead touching the floor to ceiling, then as your house compresses, it's going to wrinkle, warp, and crack your corner bead out of place. So what I did was I just snipped the paper really quickly so I could see where I need to cut. Now I'm going to eyeball a nice straight line right up to the corner. And now I'm going to go from this side and I'm going to eyeball this line again and I'm going to do that. And here's a quick little tip. Usually after snipping it warps one of the sides a bit. One side will stay straight and one side will be warped and you should look at it. So I'm now going to bend that side back to where it needs to be. Or the other trick to get around that, flip your bead over and use the factory side on the top where it matters. Next it's time to apply the mud and I like to do a side swipe method. So what I mean is I get the mud on my knife like this and I just swipe down. And I like to make sure I have a good quarter inch to an eighth on here to start. Now I'm going to make sure I don't have any gaps or voids of mud and I'm going to spread this all evenly. Next I'm going to take my bead and I'm going to push it up against this one as I'm and now I'm going to be jiggling it slightly to help press it into the mud and now I'm going to be pressing up and taking my fingers and squishing some of the excess mud out but my fingers aren't going past the paper, otherwise I'll get mud all over them. Next I'm going to gently wipe out the mud. Not all of it, I want to leave some under so I can adjust it.
Now that I've gotten most of the mud out, I'm going to check the corner bead for adjustment before I firmly embed it in place. Rule number one, does it line up with my existing corner bead? Yes, it lines up perfectly with that one. The next thing you need to check is, can you see light through the bead? Right there, so there's room to fill. Check the other side. Yes, room to fill. And now I do the same check in the middle of the corner bead and on the bottom of the corner bead. And if one side doesn't have, if one side has too much fill, I push it a little bit with my knife and then double check this side to make sure both sides have room for fill. Now that I know this corner bead is good from top to bottom, I firmly wipe the mud out. That also gives it a little time to saturate into the paper flange, which helps adhesion. Now here's a really important tip to note. This area where the two corner beads meet is really prone to cracking. So what I do is I take a piece of tape and I put some mud on it, about an eighth of mud on it. I then take it right here. And now let's take a close look at that so you can see where exactly it's gonna go. So it is going to go about an eighth of an inch back from the nose of the bead. If you put it too close to the nose of the bead like that, it'll hang over or you'll have a piece of tape you have to bury. But if you put it back from the nose of the flange just a little bit, then the natural filling area from the corner beads covers the tape. It also doesn't hurt to let the mud saturate into that tape for a minute. It's gonna have a way better chance of adhering and not blistering. Once it's done that, then it's time to wipe it out. And I'll often just hold it there with one corner and it's going to slide around a bit on you until it finds its place. It's your job to help it find its place. So now that's done and let's take one more quick look at it. As you can see, it's just a hair back from the nose and it's going to stop cracks showing from the flange of those beads. So thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. I hope with those tips you're able to get some awesome corner beads. And I know you might be a little bit confused as to why a carpenter knows so much about drywall. Don't ask.